coming on relatively short notice. Um, I'll try to make a few opening remarks, and then we will uh, take questions. You guys are welcome to work up here as long this afternoon as you need. Go ahead, Trev. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. I want to first acknowledge that uh, it's been a tough day today, and uh, it's been a tough day for a lot of us. Obviously, it's been a tough day for for Coach Frost and our coaching staff and uh, and our players. I also want to say that uh, this is a day that I'd hoped would never come. And uh, I first want to I want to thank Coach Frost. Uh, you know, I had the opportunity to get to know Scott a little bit, and have really come to appreciate him. You know, Scott worked really hard here. Um, Scott loves Nebraska. He'll always be a Husker. He's a Nebraskan. And he worked really, really hard here. He really wanted this thing to work. And I can tell you that I really wanted this thing to work. Our donors wanted it to work. Everybody wanted it to work. And so uh, in a way, it's unfortunate and sad that we're, that we're here today. So I want to thank Scott. I also want to thank uh, Mickey Joseph. Uh, for taking on this role. I felt like you know, there's nine games left in the season. And uh, I think we owed it to the players, we owe it to our fans, to give these players an opportunity these last nine games. Um, we've got good players on this football team. And so having a different voice and, and having some new energy and enthusiasm, I'm hoping, um, can make a difference for this team. And then third and finally, I think at the end of the day, there has to be accountability. When you run a professional organization that um, has high standards, accountability has to matter. And, you know, Scott and I talked about this very clearly. 16 and 31 obviously was, was not at a level that um, was acceptable to us. So I met with Scott this morning at 11 o'clock. I'll just kind of walk you through um, the process of the day. I met with Scott at 11 o'clock. And, and informed him, I want you to know that Scott was extremely collegial and he understood. Um, I wasn't surprised because I know how much Scott loves this place. And I think that's really important. Um, we then both had an opportunity to go down and meet with the team. Uh, we sent an email to our team. Most of the team was here, so we got to meet with our team. And uh, Scott was with me and I thanked the team and I thanked Scott in front of the team for all of his hard work. I think the team really cares about Scott, and I know Scott really cares about the team. I then gave Scott an opportunity to spend time himself with the team. And so we all left, and Scott spent time with the team, and, and uh, those conversations will remain with the team and Scott. And then finally, I invited uh, Mickey Joseph, and, and Mickey came in about 11.45 and, and, uh, and spoke to the team and, and walked them through some of the changes that he envisioned. Uh, I communicated to Mickey that Mickey's the head coach. Um, I won't meddle in Mickey's decision-making process. I encouraged Mickey to be the head coach and make decisions as the head coach. And so uh, he'll ultimately have an opportunity probably with all of you to explain. I think there will be some changes. He explained some of the changes with the team. There'll be some structural changes and things that I think Mickey believes in, which will, uh, will be good going forward. He can explain all that to you. Um, just want to tell you a little bit about the process going forward, and we'll open it up to questions. Um, obviously, we're going to do a national search. You know, we're going to engage some third-party help, mostly for logistics and other things. I want you to know as well, and I would encourage our fans and everyone to recognize there will be a lot of rumors out there. There's going to be a lot of innuendo. Um, I want you to know that, that these sort of decisions and processes are not made in a silo. I have a lot of great mentors and friends that we'll be working with. Um, and ultimately, you know, in a prior life, I have relationships with a lot of coaches in this business, and I intend to reach out to a lot of people. And so if you hear that Trev Alberts reached out to XYZ Coach, it doesn't mean that I've offered the job to XYZ Coach. I think there's some fabulous coaches out there that have a perspective about our job that I could benefit from. And so I'm going to reach out to a lot of people. And so if you hear that Trev Alberts reached out to XYZ coach, it might very well be true. It doesn't mean that I'm trying to hire that coach. I'd like to get that perspective. I'd like to get a perspective of a coach who isn't here right now about our job 
and what the uniqueness is and the needs and those sorts of things. So just want to be clear about that process. Obviously, there's been some changes in college football with the early signing date and transfer portal. There are considerations as we go forward as well. But most importantly, I'm going to do everything I possibly can, like I think we did for Scott, uh, to support Mickey Joseph and the staff as best we possibly can. It's a group of young men that they're hurting. Um, and, you know, they, they care deeply about this place. And so we're going to do everything we can to support them and help them. They've got nine games left. We've got a great opportunity this weekend against Oklahoma. And so we're going to support them as best we can going forward. All right. I guess we'll open it up from comments and questions here. Why, why now as opposed to October or the end of the season? That's a good question. It's a fair question, Annie. It's, you know, at, at this point, I just felt like, um, as I mentioned earlier, we, we, we owed it to the players, you know, uh, to give them uh, a different voice, perhaps slightly different vision, give them some confidence and opportunity. We've got nine games. We've got seniors on this team that have invested a lot for a long time. And uh, I know how disruptive these changes are. You're not just affecting the player's life, you're affecting all the coaches and their family, and I understand that. Um, but we needed to do something. We needed to inject something into this team to give them the confidence and, and hopefully help them compete. I'd, nothing would uh, please me more than to, to see a pretty significant change and help this team get over the hump and win some games. The, the buyout was supposed to drop in half uh, on October 1st. How, how did you handle that? Was, it, was there a negotiated settlement? Or does Scott get the $15 million? There's no negotiated settlement. The University of Nebraska has a long history of living up to what we've agreed to. And so um, the contract is what the contract is. And of course, the university will uh, comply as we always do. Did you have to summon any outside help from boosters? To I won't get into any discussions about outside boosters or any of that sort of thing. But Trent, when, when did you actually make the decision? Last night? Yeah, I think last night. Uh, not a lot of slept. Uh, you know, didn't sleep a lot, Andy. And, and uh, a lot of us didn't. But, um, you know, some real concern. Um, throughout the first couple games and, you know, wanted this thing to work, wanted to give a little extra time. And I think last night and then through the night and then into this morning, um, I really felt like, um, you know, we needed, needed to make a change. If they won, would that have changed? Like if, if they get a stop? You know, I don't, I don't know, Sam. I mean, I, I don't want to get into the what ifs if they stopped here on third down or got this. I mean, I, I don't think that's really healthy. We are where we are. We're 16 and 31. And I want to give this group of players an opportunity to have a different voice um, to try to win some games this year. Do you, do you have a short list of coaches you're considering at this point? Would you, or are you just starting with a very broad? Well, Steve, I, I want to first say, first of all, we have not engaged in any third party folks. I have not talked to any agents of any football coaches. We were all in to help Scott be successful, everybody wanted Scott to be successful. And I believe Scott wanted Scott to be successful as well. Um, so listen, yeah, anybody in my, in, in my position has a group of, of folks that, that they admire. Um, at the end of the day for us, we need to, you know, get some clear definitions about what those coaching qualities look like. You know, what, what is our unique culture need in terms of coaching? And ultimately, what is our culture gonna be as a team? So. Yeah, there's a group of people that I'm well aware of and interested in, would like to talk to. Um, and we'll go through that as, as we move forward. But right now, in the immediacy, Steve, we've got an opportunity to support, uh, support the team as they move forward. What chance does Mickey Joseph have to earn the job on it? Well, I met with Mickey and I told him, you know, we were going to do a national search. And uh, so um, we'll, we'll continue to do a national search and we'll see how, how the season unfolds. Um, but I think we have an opportunity you know, to hire a, an outstanding coach that can lead our program. Would and I'd love to see Mickey, you know, grow into that. And we'll just see where it goes. Um, but again, we'll do a national search. And, and if at that point, you know, Mickey is, a, is an obvious candidate, uh, um, he'll be part of that conversation as well. Trev, where do you, you know, I guess, what kind of expectations do you have for the program now? I mean, where, what do you think the ceiling is and where would you like the team to go? Well, I won't get into specific, you know, ceilings or where to go. Listen, I, we've said all along, I, I just love to see this team continue to grow, compete, make progress, have a team that represents the values of Nebraskans, be tough, win the line of scrimmage, do the fundamental things that teams need to do to win games. And, uh, and I think we can get there, you know. We, 
We'll stop talking about championships or stop talking about things we used to do. We'll just get really process oriented, detail oriented. And, and ultimately, when you start doing those fundamental championship habits type things, as I think about them, uh, those types of wins and things follow. But we need to stop focusing on that. We need to stop fo f start focusing on those small fundamental things that ultimately lead to those types of things. And so those are the things we'll do. What are three or four qualities that you really want in a good head coach? You, you hire many head coaches at other places. Talking intangibles, not necessarily you know, uh, resume things. You know, Sam, I've always believed that, um, you know, great coaches are, are people of character. Um, you know, I, I think they're, they're people managers. You know, they're culture builders. I think they're grinders. A lot of the great ones don't have a whole lot of ho hobbies. It's all they know, you know? And, um, you know, so, so, so those types of things. And I, you know, I think young people, as we've moved forward, have changed a little bit. So I think uh, being able to identify and relate to the modern student athlete and all that they're going through and all of the new things like NIL and all those types of things are very important. But the basic fundamentals of authentic leadership, I mean, is this somebody that the players are willing to follow? I mean, it's just basic types of leadership things that are really, really important to me. And I like people who hate to lose. I like people who hate to lose more than they enjoy winning. And I've got to be really careful when I say those things because I certainly don't mean to infer and imply that our previous coach didn't have those things. And I want to be very clear about that. That's not fair to Scott. What I'm saying is, is that's what I have found. No matter if it's a football coach, basketball coach, or a volleyball coach, there's some very core and key fundamental characteristics that help to define each of them. And those are the types of things that I believe in as well. Trey, when you look at the coaching market and just the salaries and how much they've gone up, how competitive can Nebraska be in this current market of coaching salaries? Yeah, I mean, I'm well aware of, of where the market has shifted in terms of compensation. And, and uh, at a place like Nebraska, you know, we're blessed to be in a position to, to meet market demand. And certainly resources won't be an impediment towards hiring the type of coach that we want to lead the Husker program. What sort of mixed are you that just didn't? You know, Andy, I, um, you know, I haven't put a lot of thought into that, Andy, but I, 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 I thought it would work. You know, and uh, listen, we all have short memories, but uh, Scott Frost was uh, among the absolute leaders in that cycle of coaching. And uh, uh, Scott's a good football coach. Scott, Scott's going to go on and be a successful coach. I told him that this morning, and, uh, and, and, and he agreed. You know, Scott's a good football coach, um, and the right situation for him will emerge, and I think he'll be very successful. I was determined uh, to work with him um, and try to balance, Andy, that, that, that very delicate balance of not meddling, because it's the last thing I think administration should do, is start dictating to coaches how they operate their deal, but be supportive. And, um, uh, but it is what it is. It didn't work. And um, that's why we're here today. What are some of the specific qualities that he has that made him right for this role? Well, Mickey's an energetic guy. Um, you, some of you have interacted with him already. He's pretty black and white. And, um, you know, I was in there when he talked to the team. And, and uh, you know, he, I think, sees this as a real opportunity for him as well, professionally. And all of you will get a chance to, to talk to Mickey. Um, you know, I think he has an infectious personality. I think that's important. Um, you know, he's, he's been some places. So I think that benefits him. I think he has some different feelings about structure and approach and how he'll handle practice and some different things. Um, so there will be some immediate, fairly significant changes into his approach. And uh, he had a very poignant conversation with the team today uh, that I thought they took very well. And um, at the same time, I think, like Scott, Mickey will, will love them and seek to serve them. This has been a unique program. What sort of qualities do you look for in a, in a person to run this kind of <coughs> from that specific slant of it, but just the intense interest and in all that? Well, I, you know, I don't know if there's anything specific to, you know, how magnified the role is. You know, I, I, I certainly think it, it has to be somebody that um, has a servant leadership mentality, you know, that's here to serve young people, um, that perhaps sees a picture bigger than um, 
than themselves, if you will. Um, but I, I don't think anything specific. I mean, every single job in college football has challenges. This job has advantages to other jobs, and it has some disadvantages. It's the same thing with every job in college football. We have 1.8 million people in this state. That's not going to change. But we got some built-in advantages here. So we need to play to our strengths and build on those, right? And so the right kind of coach, I think, sees this as an opportunity um, to rebuild and build something special here. Why don't you think it worked? I mean, you've been here now for uh, how many, however many games, 15, 15 games. Why, why do you think uh, you know, Nebraska was 4-11 and 11 in those games? Sam, I don't know. And, you know, and I'm not trying to be flippant with you. If I knew, um, we would have made some changes. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. You see something in cross coaching stuff, whether in practice or in games, that uh, disappointed you or frustrated you? You know, I, I, I could spend a lot of time. I don't want to spend a lot of time going backwards and looking at and evaluating Scott, only because I think at this point it's a little unfair to Scott. We've moved on. You know, certainly there's things that you observe and you'd see and you'd say, well, maybe I'd do something different. We would have conversations. But at the end of the day, Scott Frost was a head coach. And I promise you, Scott made decisions that he thought were in the best interest of the University of Nebraska. They were genuine. He believed that in his heart. Okay? And so um, that's really important. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time evaluating uh, Scott's performance over the last five years. I think, you know, at the end of the day, Scott's no longer the head coach here, and we'll move on and, and look forward to. I think you'll see some of those changes that, and you'll get to talk to Coach Joseph about that, but uh, mostly I just want to salute Scott. And, uh, you know, he'll always be a Husker, and he's from the great state of Nebraska and always be welcome here, and, and uh, we want to support him in that role. Other questions for Trev? What's the uh, when you uh, timeline? You ideally want to have a coach in place, whether it's Mickey or it's someone else, right after the season, or like how long is that you doing that taking? Well, I, I do think there's some benefits in terms of making the decision when we've made it. Uh, I think this gives us an opportunity to really, you know, do the necessary work. We, we need to dive into a real process and a detail-oriented process that talks to a lot of people. And that's why I mentioned earlier, you're going to hear about a lot of names. That's good. That means we're going to talk to a lot of people uh, because we're going to clearly define what our values are, and we're not going to hire coaches who don't believe in what we believe in, Sam. And so we need to take as long as it takes to find the right leader. Um, so is there an ideal timeline? Sure. I mean, you could naturally look at some of these timelines early signing date and say it'd be really nice to be able to get the person in place by then because it would allow us to do that but we won't make decisions or rush things uh, just to get a coach hired uh, we're also not going to try to win the press conference all right at the end of the day we need to hire the right leader and the right fit and that's a really important thing here as well we drive to the recruits at all? By, or we have a chance to visit with the recruits? Or we let the coaches just kind of handle that from here on out? Just to I'll do what, whatever Mickey asked me to do. You know, I, I really enjoy talking to the recruits, prospective recruits. You've probably seen me out on the field. And, and uh, I really enjoy talking to the OS young men. Um, I will do anything I possibly can to be supportive of the football coaching staff, but I will not get in the way. And so ultimately, what I would do with Scott is every time we talked, I'd ask, how can I help? Am I doing anything that's counterproductive? I'll do the same thing with Mickey. What can I do to help? I want him to be successful uh, because ultimately that means our young men are being successful. Uh, so I'll do whatever Mickey and the staff ask me to do. Trev, for you personally, do you feel like the hiring of this, of this next coach will define your tenure as Nebraska's athletic director? No, I think you guys will probably define my tenure. Uh, that's how it works. But. Uh, no, I, you know, I don't think about those kinds of things. You know, I'm no different than Scott. I love the University of Nebraska. And, and uh, like I said earlier, um, I had really hoped uh, that the day I got introduced here as the athletic director that I'd never have to be doing this. Um, we really, I, I really thought that I could work with Scott, and uh, that's what everybody wanted. So we'll, we'll do the right things. We'll do the best that we can. Uh, every decision we make here, whether it's right or wrong, we'll learn later. But they are always done with what we think is in the best long-term interest of the University of Nebraska and our athletic department.
And this place will always be bigger than any one person. And that is the way it has to be. And so we'll, uh, we'll do the very best that we can, and we'll dive into the details. We'll surround ourselves with, with good people, and um, we'll, uh, we'll identify the next leader of Husker football. Back to Mickey for a second. Um, why him as opposed to anyone else on the, on the staff? Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, you, I went through a lot of folks, too. I mean, you can naturally make certain arguments, certain places, and, you know, Mickey's not calling the plays, you know. Coach Whipple is, and so there's a lot of responsibilities for the head coach that lie outside of football. You can only imagine with, you know, Fox coming this weekend, and you know we we need to have Coach Whipple focused on game planning and play calling all week, and and obviously defensively we've got some fairly significant adjustments to make, and so Chins has got to be really focused there, and so and I again I think I think that Mickey. Uh, his personality, his energy, and enthusiasm—I um, I think can. Uh, uh, we need a different voice, right? We, we we need to we need to provide hope for these young men. I mean, you got a lot of young men in that locker room. That at the end of the day, this is a football is a tough sport. You have to force yourself to do things you don't want to do physically. And so, having somebody that can pull that out of you and motivate you to do that. Um, and in my observations of Coach Joseph, I think he has some of those attributes, and I'd like to see him uh, uh, function in that role. Anything else? Sure. Was there anyone else relieved of their duties today, or was it just Coach Frost? Just Coach Frost. Now again, Mickey Joseph is the head coach, and uh, if he chooses to make some of those additional changes, uh, we will support those changes as well. But I am not aware of any of those that he anticipates at this time. Thank you. Thank you.